President Biden angers his American voters as he sets up the largest oil pumping operation in secret. The railroad strike is likely to happen unless Congress intervenes. And Dr. Fauci says he remembers very little about COVID, the lockdowns and mistreatment of people now that he's been forced to be deposed in a massive federal lawsuit. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out as a small news station here on YouTube. Also, I want to thank today's video sponsor, Mr. 1920 Soap, and I will tell you more about them later in the video. This soap is amazing. Okay, as the potential railroad strike nears, polling suggests that most voters want to avoid a railroad strike. Like Godoy, this would absolutely disrupt the nation in a way we haven't seen since the Civil War. 92% of registered voters when polled said that this is a huge issue and it must be dealt with. 72% uh, believe that Congress needs to immediately intervene and get in front of this before it becomes a major issue. Now, over 100,000 rail workers are demanding better, better benefits such as sick leave, sick leave and flexible scheduling. However, railroad companies appear to have stopped the big stride negotiations uh, and are basically just seeing how this thing plays out. I, I feel like at this point, they just really don't know what to do. Now, a railroad shutdown would cause a massive problem for the economy and would have a huge ripple effect. So they're now saying that uh, U.S. Congress before Christmas, should immediately intervene, negotiate, and get this thing handled before there's a shutdown, right? Before 100,000 workers walk off the job. This would cause irreparable damage to the country and the economy. Uh, this has led union workers to become frustrated as they now feel that their bosses simply aren't listening to, listening to them, which is what caused this problem in the first place. Now, former President Donald Trump has placed himself in another controversial position by accepting a private meeting with rapper Kanye West. You, brought, you probably have heard about this. After the meeting, Trump received heavy backlash because Kanye snuck somebody in by the name of Nick Fuentes, who is basically, uh, I don't know if he is a white supremacist, but he's called a white supremacist and a Holocaust denier. Um, and he's basically um, known as being anti-Semitic, which is what has rapper Kanye West in trouble right now for his anti-Semitic comments. Uh, Trump put out on his Truth Social account, Our dinner meeting was intended to be Kanye and me only, but he arrived with a guest whom I had never met and knew nothing about. So Trump is claiming that uh, this was supposed to be just him and Kanye. This other guy shows up. He tried to be cordial. Now he finds out who this guy is, and it's it's been a, a nightmare ever since. Dr. Anthony Fauci has now retired, but has still continued to go on as many TV interviews as he can, telling people to get their booster and to talk about COVID. In a recent CBS interview, Fauci attacked Trump for the way he treated China during the lockdown. He stated, what happens is if you look at the anti-China approach that clearly the Trump administration had from the very beginning and the accusatory nature, the Chinese are going to flinch back and say, oh, we're not going to talk about it. While Fauci stated that he disagreed with how China responded to Trump, he argued that Trump could have been less aggressive and maybe gotten more assistance out of China uh, Fauci then went on to admit that China behaves this way anyway, so maybe it wasn't Trump's fault. So giving very conflicting information during these interviews. Now, speaking of Fauci, the White House has tried very, very hard to cover up the fact that Fauci is a key witness in a massive lawsuit against the federal government for colluding to censor American speech online. Uh, on TV and also on social media. So basically, these guys colluded with big tech to squash our freedom of speech rights. The Attorney General of Louisiana, Jeff Landry, said for being a supposed brilliant doctor, Dr. Fauci is a real dummy and has a bad memory, or maybe he's just pretending. Fauci was investigated over the weekend and questioned for seven hours and knew almost nothing about the pandemic, 
lockdowns, big tech collusion, and more. So oh, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Landry went on to say, it was amazing. Literally, we spent seven hours with Dr. Fauci. This, um, this the man who single-handedly wrecked the U.S. economy based upon science, follow the science. And over the course of seven hours, we discovered he can't recall practically anything dealing with his COVID response. So basically pretended like he doesn't know anything. Landry also said it was extremely troubling to realize that this is a man who advised presidents of the United States and yet couldn't recall information he put out, information he discussed, press conferences he uh, held during the COVID-19 response. So do you think that Dr. Fauci is dumb or is he just playing dumb in order to avoid uh, a, a deeper investigation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Landry also said, we're going to follow the evidence everywhere it goes to get down to exactly what happened, to get down to the fact that our government used private entities to suppress the speech of Americans. Now, just when you think it can't get any crazier today, Dr. Fauci said on an interview, I'm actually very open-minded to COVID having leaked from a lab. <laughs> wow, just wow. Like after saying it could happen, covering it up, saying it didn't happen for two years, now you're saying, now that I'm retired, I'm actually very open-minded to this lab leak theory. Wow, absolutely crazy. Well, President Biden just angered his own voters to do something that could actually help the American people. Heaven forbid, right? The Biden administration under President Biden's direction quietly approved a massive new crude oil terminal in the Gulf of Mexico just off the Texas shoreline. And at the same time, approved Chevron to go into Venezuela and pump oil to bring back to the United States to be refined and sold right here in the United States. The White House, uh, as of now, has only approved Chevron to go into Venezuela for six months. But the CEO of Chevron said, we need more time. Biden doesn't realize just how long it takes to get old infrastructure back up and running so that we can even begin to pump oil from Venezuela. Now, Venezuela and their oil fields have been sanctioned by the United States government since 2017. So this equipment is old and it hasn't been used in a long time. And so Chevron is saying, hey, this is a great idea to bring down the price of gas, but there's no way we can do it in, in six months or less. Now, let me be clear. The folks telling Biden to shut down the Keystone Pipeline and other pipelines to block leasing rights, uh, to make everything electric, they are absolutely furious at President Joe Biden. And there's already lawsuits flying, and it's only Monday. So uh, this new oil rig is going to be huge. Uh, it will produce around 2 million barrels of oil per day, which is about 10% of the United States' daily use. So this thing is huge. It's a really big deal. And they hate him for doing this, right? Now, I mean, it does kind of beg the question... Like, why shut down the Keystone Pipeline and all these other pipelines? It's the safest way to transport oil. But then 19 months later, to approve a massive oil rig over the ocean? Like, environmentally, this, this doesn't make a lot of sense. But what do I know? I, I just cover the news here each day, right? Okay, now, according to a new poll found on Daily Mail, 62% of Americans believe President Biden's son, Hunter, should absolutely be investigated and say that President Biden likely knows much more about Hunter's shady business deals than he's letting on. In fact, 44% of Democrats say they want to see Hunter Biden investigated by a GOP-led House. And 62% of independent voters say they want to see him investigated. You can imagine how many Republicans, right? So I do think that this investigation is going to happen. Why was his laptop buried and what was he doing using uh, Vice President Biden's name in order to secure money for the Biden family? All of this is coming out in the news. As Elon Musk makes good and bad waves on Twitter, uh, there have been calls from celebrities and politicians for Apple 
and Google Play to block Twitter in their phones and in their app stores. Elon Musk said this would be a very bad business move and would reflect poorly on Apple and Google for controlling speech. But Musk said if they do this, he will create his own phone company in order to compete with them. That idea was very well received on the internet. Now, last week, I told you the World Economic Forum leader, Klaus Schwab, said China is the example going forward on how to deal with deadly viruses. You know, the lockdowns and everything they did. Well, all weekend long, the people of China fought back against the police forced lockdowns. The police have been beating citizens, telling them go home. Uh, but the crowds just keep getting bigger and bigger as the people of China want autonomy and freedom. They are even calling for Xi Jinping to resign as he is ruling more like a dictator and less like a president of a country. It seems that China is getting tired of the communist fist holding them down. Now, I want to tell you about my friends over at Mr. 1920 Soap. Their soap is absolutely amazing. Oh, it smells so, so good. I've been, I've been telling my community about this group for almost three years now. And last year, it was the number one Christmas gift and stocking stuffer that I gave away. People just were raving about it. They continue to reorder when they do. They say, hey, you got any promotional codes or, or uh, these guys still do in business? Not only are they in business, but they're thriving. They're a small American business. This soap is made in the United States. It's all natural, no fake harsh chemicals. And it absolutely smells great. It's big. It lasts a long time. And this group has single-handedly helped Casey and I give away tens of thousands of dollars to people struggling right here in our community during the lockdown. So thank you, Mr. 1920 uh, Soap, for helping my community and also bringing uh, the very, very best prices to my community. And I'll make sure to leave a link down below. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Make sure to check out that link to get your name entered to be one of the winners of the $15,000 that Casey and I are giving away thanks to generous video sponsors, and I'll make sure to leave a link for that as well. Also, make sure to check out this important video and be subscribed to the channel. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by today, and I will see you on the next video.